Hey y'all, welcome back to Discus Talk. Um, today we're going to be talking about protozoa, um, external protozoa in particular. I am going to have another uh, live stream about internal protozoa. Uh, we did hexameter last week, but we need to do uh, further of the protozoa for internal. Um, so we're going to do that separately in a couple of weeks. Um, hi Francis, just waiting on people to start getting in. Um, there will be a, a drawing next week for a gift card from uh, Everything Aquatic, and that'll go along with our live stream for next week, which is going to be um, talking about the worms, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, this week, like I said, we're going to be talking about the external protozoa. I will not be talking about it. I think everybody pretty much at this point has been exposed to ick and had issues with it. So that's one that I am not going to cover. That was very simple to um, cure and treat, um, even if you have the air breathers or the corridoras, you can at least um, kind of control it, so to speak. Uh, with the scaled fish, you can easily treat it and completely eradicate it from your system. So that's something I'm really not going to talk a whole lot about, but I'm going to talk about some that aren't well-known. Um, Tilladenella, Tetrahymena, Tripodina, uh, Epistolus I want to talk about, because a lot of people talk about uh, my fish has Epistolus, so I want to talk about that a little bit. I think they have a big misconception on what Epistolus looks like on fish. Um, there's, there's a few of them. I found different papers. For. Um, yeah, PP is something that can go wrong really quick, and to be honest with you, it does not take care of everything, um, and it can't be used on everything, because if you have open sores and you use PP, you're going to burn the um, muscle or the tissue of the fish with PP. Um, it actually acts like an acid for organic materials. So if you've got an open wound and you put PP on it, it's just going to bubble that up. It's going to burn some of that, and that's not really good for the fish. So that's something that you do have to be careful about. Um, but it does it does take care of a lot of stuff. Hi, Matt. Hi, Brand Fish Keeping. I'm glad to see you guys here today. Hi, Brenda. Nice to have you guys in. Kim, I'm glad you could make it. I know you're not feeling well today. And guys, I'm going to tell you, I haven't been feeling well today either. Um, I started having a really bad upset stomach after I posted the um, announcement for the live stream. Um, that's the reason I'm still in my pajamas and sitting here. So, um, let's see. I think I've said, said hi to everybody. I'm glad you guys are all here. Um, I'm going to pull up first a paper that is from Dr. Ruth Klinger and Dr. Uh, Ruth Francis Floyd from Florida. If I can get my screen going like that. And show you guys some of the different parasites that they talk about in this particular paper. And that's some of the ones that we will go over to. Let's see. Here we go. Let me zoom in on the area that we're going to talk about. The Chilodinella, the Tetrahymena, the Trichodina, um, the Pistolus, and I think that's all I'm going to really talk about today are those. So that's it. We all know that one. There's tetrahymena. This one lives in organic debris at the bottom of an aquarium. Um, so if you have plants in your aquarium and you've got dead leaves in the bottom of it and that sort of thing, you're going to have tetrahymena start to grow in your aquarium. Um, this one is, is not one that necessarily is going to kill your fish, but it can cause some serious issues. Um, and it definitely needs to be controlled by keeping your debris up, keeping your tank cleaned out, um, and that sort of thing. Let me pull up 
see if I can find it. I know I've got it here somewhere. Okay. Let me switch screens real quick. This is tetrahymena under a light microscope. You can't really see a whole lot. It looks like every other protozoa. Um, it's very hard to um, diagnose it if you don't know exactly what you're looking for. This one actually has the most detail that actually you can tell. You can see the nuclei and that sort of thing. The other ones are a little bit less distinct. Um, if you see it under a scanning electron microscope, if I can change pages here, it doesn't look like it's going to let me. So, just a minute, pull up. This one. Sorry, guys. It was supposed to switch over to the other one, and it didn't. Here's this, this one is the scanning electron microscope. You can see all of the little ciliates all the way around. Um, this is a really good photo um, from that. I really wish I could afford a scanning electron microscope for that. Um, tetrahymena can be treated easily with uh, formalin, uh, which is something that I kind of recommend using. And it's, it's a fairly simple one. I'm also going to pull up another paper on the tetrahymena. Here it is. Uh oh. It's not the right one. Okay, hold on just a second. My pages disappear too much. Okay, I found it. Um, there we go. And it talks about it. Um, it's a ciliated protozoan that can infect a wide range of fish, fish species, and it's commonly reported in guppies. It actually causes more fatalities in guppies than any other species. Um, they're the most susceptible to it with a mortality rate of 87 to 100 percent. Um, mollies and angelfish have slightly lower at 23 and 33 percent. So it's really not that fatal. Um, it is a good reason to keep your, your tank clean um, so that you don't have issues with that. Now if we go back to this one, we'll talk about Chilla Donella. I do not have a separate picture of this one, but this is pretty much what it looks like under a light microscope. Um, it's also a ciliated protozoa. Um, this one causes the fish to excrete mucus, ex excessive mucus. So if you have a lot of slime coat, um, that could be an indicator that you might have Chilla Donella. Um, to, to get an identification on it, you use a light microscope with skin scrapings of mucus. And it's fairly easy to identify. Um, this one is also treated with formalin. Some of these can be treated with uh, malachite green, and I believe this is one of them, um, the Chilla de Mella. Um, let's see. <laughs> Hi Skipper, I'm glad you came in. It's good to see you guys. Paul, I'm glad to see you in here. I'm stopping to say hello to everybody that came in. I mentioned earlier, I'm not feeling real good today, so you guys bear with me. Um, I'm hoping to keep everything straight. I think I did. I pulled up a PDF for Chilla Danella. And it talks about its uh, its free living fauna, fauna, which means that it can be floating in your tank and never affect your fish. 
or it can infect the fish. A lot of these are opportunistic. And I don't know if everybody realized that there were this many protozoa that can infect your fish. I know everybody knows about it. Um, I know some people know about Chilodinella or maybe they know about Costia. Um, Chilodinella, like I said, it's easy to, to identify under a microscope. Um, I don't have any photos of that one though. Unless there's one in this paper. And I don't think there is. Yeah, there is. And there they are. You can kind of see the structure on the inside of this, these, um, this identifies them. Hi, Bob. Thanks, Dina. I'll get to feeling better. This is probably one of those 24 hour bugs or something. Uh, not a whole lot in here. It talks about the life cycle, but there's so much with it. I, I don't want to go into all of that. Um, I did want to scroll down and look at the treatments for it. Okay, here's some. Um, hydrogen peroxide, 200 parts per million for 30 minutes. Um, with 24 hour constant aeration and the duration and frequency is one time. So you do a 30 minute dip in hydrogen peroxide. Formalin is 150 parts per million for one hour and it's not recommended for young animals. I do not recommend um, PP or uh, formalin for too young of a, creature, of a fish anyway. Um, that is, dosage rate for ponds is 30, 20 to 30 parts per million for four to five days. Um, potassium permanganate is the 20 parts per million, the copper sulfate at 0.15 and 20, and salt. And this is something else. Salt is is a godsend when it comes to the protozoans. Most of the freshwater protozoans cannot um, be in salt water. So just like egg, if you get the dosage up to say a brackish or close to brackish, you can treat almost all of the protozoa. Um, let's move on to the next one. Let me pull up my introduction here. Trichodina. I have actually found this one in a friend of mine's fish. He sent me some samples down and I put them under the microscope and I actually found this one for the first time. And um, we knew there was something wrong and we treated for it and the fish were fine. So that worked out really, really well. Um, I believe we did the Riddick Plus treatment on this that has the formalin and the malachite green. So that worked really well. Um, with this one, it doesn't affect the fish directly. It actually weakens the immune system of the fish, uh, allowing bacteria to infect the fish. I didn't pull that up. That's um, so that's something you have to kind of watch out for with some of these, some of these uh, protozoas. They, they themselves may not actually harm the fish, but they, they will make enough damage to the immune system that um, the fish can definitely get sick. Um, hi, Didi and Sheller. Good to see you guys come in. Hi, S. Welcome to the stream. I don't want to miss anybody this week. I missed everybody last week, and I think the last time I streamed also, I missed everybody. So I'm trying not to do that this time. Um, Tricky Danella, let me pull up the pictures. Let's see if I can find it on my share screen. I don't have it up either. Okay, let me go to, here is the Tricky Dina. You can see it has a really interesting pattern. And the one that I found on my friend's sample also had that. So, okay. This is what it looks like under the microscope. So I'm gonna pull that up. Stop screen. And share. Kim, I just talked to you like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, here it is. This is actually trichodina under a microscope. Um, it's a, got an interesting pattern on it. 
they all have a, an interesting pattern, but they're not all the same all the time. And that's something to note. Um, actually, Matt, I would have to look that up. I had it earlier where I was looking at it, but I don't use hydrogen peroxide, so I've never really paid attention to it. Um, sorry, I need to stop sharing. I've never really paid attention to um, the dosage on that because I don't use it for treatment. I generally use the formula. Um, let's see. What else do I have? I don't have any more pictures. So let's go to... I've got a paper that should have a treatment in it. And this one I think actually covers a couple of different species of trichodinates. Trichodinates. Uh, this is from Virginia Tech. For marine fit, this is one of the ones that can't, that can go both to freshwater and salt water. Um, but depending on the strain. So if you've got a saltwater fish, a marine fin fish, you can use fresh water to clean off the trichodina. And I think it works vice versa for the fresh water and salt water too. Um, let's see. Hi Kevin, welcome to the stream. How can it be controlled? Chemical treatment. Formal and bath at 170 to 250 parts per million for 60 minutes. So if you can get Riddick Plus or Ickex or something with formalin in it, that will definitely treat the um, trichodina. And it's very, that one is like the other one, that one is very easy with a light microscope to diagnose. Um, it just has that really distinctive pattern. Um, this is a different pattern, but it's, you can see it's still very, very much um, different from other protozoa. So you definitely know which one you're talking about when you see that one. Sorry, I had this screen, share screen on up. I need to figure this one out so I don't have to do that every time. Okay, let's go back to this one. And hold it up. Epistolus uh, is obviously a stalk. They sit in clusters or colonies on the scales and, and gills of the fish. The difference with epistolus, from what everybody thinks, and I'm going to stop sharing for a minute, because I've seen fish that look like they had ick. And I see people saying, well, we treated with salt and we raised the temperature and my fish still had it, okay? And somebody said, well, maybe it's a pistolus. A pistolus can make white specks on the fish, but over a short period of time, the scales fall off and this, the fish actually starts showing wounds rather than um, spots. So a pistolus doesn't just make spots, it makes wounds on the fish. Um, and it does it fairly quickly. So, um, Kevin, that's a good question, and I'm going to hit that in a minute. It's called the red sore disease. That's what I want to pull up. I want y'all to see that because that's what it is. It makes sores on the fish. It's not making white spots on the fish. Which one is that one? It is this one. And let me zoom in. Right here, it says it's called the red sore disease because it makes wounds on the fish. Now let me pull up this one. You guys can say epistolus. And I've heard people say my discus have epistolus. But this was a study of, I can't remember how many fish, but discus had no epistolus. So it's very rare to see it. 
along with it at zero on the discus and gyrodactylus flukes were also at zero, zero. Trichodina was at 25 and dactylogyrus, which is also a different type of fluke, were, were the main things that infect discus as well as vorticella, which is also a similar to epistolus, but that was a very low number. Um, PP is an oxidizer. Um, it's not a safe treatment, but it is an oxidizer and it will kill some of them, if not all of them. And it is very nasty. Uh, consider the fact that epistolus causes uh, wounds on the fish. It's not recommended that you use it for that. Uh, no, I didn't hit Costia yet, so I'm going to do that one next, and that's actually the last one, um, and I saved it for last for a reason. I don't think I had, yeah, see here it says Epistolus, SP, and Vorticella were found in both Oscar and Fish, and they are very similar, so, and they're rela a related species. So that was really low. Pistolus was zero. So a lot of times, most of the time, we're not. It's not going to have anything to do with discus. Um, let me see if they have costia in here. Because I need to. If I have already gone over that, I need to go back over it. Oh, that's not the right one. There we go. If the ones that I'm skipping are ones that really don't affect discus as much because a lot of these are salt water only and they're very not common in discus with the higher temperatures okay i'm not seeing it there so i'm going to go to this one <coughs> sorry costiasis or the disease produced by the flagellated protozoan ectoparasite costia Nicatrix, I can't say it, is of considerable importance for both warm water and cold water fish. It is very rarely accurately diagnosed because it is extremely small. Um, and it's very sedentary. It doesn't do a lot of moving around. Uh, and it's very, very small, so you would have to have a very high-powered microscope to see it. Um, so that one is a real hard one to identify. This is what it kind of looks like um, when it's attached. This is an epith epithelial cell, sorry, and these are the costia attached to the epithelial cell. treatment for costia is probably also formalin and maybe malachite green a lot of the treatments that work for ick are also used with other um, protozoa it kind of depends on the protozoa it also depends on the fish for the simple fact that you cannot use um, formalin and PP and that sort of thing should never be used on air breathing fish, the fish that have the lungs, because they will cause damage to the lung. Yeah, it's a uh, one to four thousand solution of formalin with one hour treatment for that one. So, see, these are very, very, very easily treated, um, but they are a pain. They all, a lot of them can be confused for ick because it can cause the scratching on stuff, rubbing on stuff, um, that sort of thing. So you really need to either have a microscope or have someone that can diagnose it for you so that you do know for sure what it is that you're dealing with. Now, Kevin, um, the heat, that is a myth simply because if you think about it, in 96, 96 and 9 to 98 will kill a lot of them, but so it would kill your fish too. So that's really, you know, kind of defeats the purpose. But raising the temperature will speed up the uh, life cycle so that they're in a point during that 
period that you're treating, they're at the point where that medication can work. That is the point of raising the heat. Um, Night Rider, I do not use PP. So um, that one you'll have to ask elsewhere. I use either formalin or I use something uh, lighter, like um, Riddick Plus if I need uh, formalin, a lighter dose. Or I will use uh, Prizicontal for some of the external parasites that works as well. Uh, what were you treating? I mean, I'm not real sure what you were treating there. I didn't see it. I hope I'm not boring you guys because I know the research papers can be boring at times for a lot of people. That's why they end up not doing the research. So, And if there's ever a new research paper you would love for me to pull up, let me know and I'll pull it up during these talks. I don't have an issue with that. Let me go back and see if I have any questions too while I'm here. Yes, please remember to subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm getting very close to the thousand mark. Um, the faster I get there, the better. Um, and I really appreciate everybody coming in to watch the channel and support the channel. You guys have all been here over the past year as it has grown. Um, I know I've changed some of the stuff I was doing for a little while, and but I'm back to more of the educational streams. Um, this few weeks is definitely going to be um, dedicated to parasites. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go back to this one for just a minute. At the top it lists all these different parasites. So I want to show you guys that. Let's see. You can see the ones that we talked about today are here, um, with the exception of the Ambifera, the Piosoma. We just don't see a lot of those in fresh water or in discus with a high temperature. So um, next week I'm going to be going over the worms. Uh, flagellates. We did Hexameda last week, but I'm going to try to go over some of these with you. That's Ichthyobodo. Um, I cannot say this one, but it's Ovinium and Cryptobia. I may touch on Myxozoa and Microsporidia along with Coxidia as well next week just to get those out of the way. Um, they're not as bad as some of the other ones, um, but this one is incurable and this one is incurable. Yeah. The trematodes, I'll hit with the worms. Uh, the nematodes, the cestodes, that would be the worms. And the crustacea. I almost added the crustacea this week, but then I decided since there is three of them, I'll do that in a different uh, live stream. But I want to cover all of them so people can learn the different parasites. Sorry, I'm reading the, the chat. That is a good point, Sheller. Raising the temperature of your tank will speed up bacteria growth in the tank, and it will also lower the amount of oxygen in the tank. Um, velvet is odinium. We're going to cover that one uh, next week. Or maybe, yeah, next week. Because Odinium actually falls under the flagellates. Um, the, we covered the ciliates today instead of because I'm not I'm trying to break them up a little bit so that I'm not trying to cover too many parasites in one session. I mean I've covered what five in this one with the tetrahymena, the chilaginella, 
uh, the Costia, the Tricodina, and the Epistolus. So I thought that was enough for this one. Um, and I have actually seen Costia in my tanks, and I've taken care of that with just some salt. Um, but that one is really, really teeny tiny. And I think that was in my African cichlid tank. And we took care of that one very quickly. Um, I've also, you know, everybody's seen it who hasn't, you know. Um, velvet is, is a lot different, though. It's, it's, a, it's under the, it falls under the flagellates. Um, and it's a pretty nasty one. That one I use copper, you would use a copper base, like cloud or something like that for. Any questions, guys, on the protozoa or on anything else while I'm on here? Because I'm not feeling well, so I kind of want to end it a little early today. But I do want to make sure that I answer questions. Yeah, velvet is hard to eliminate, and we'll definitely go through that one when I do the cryptobia. Cause, or, yeah, I think I'll do it with the cryptobia. I was going to do cryptobia by itself, but... Um, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Sheller. I just, you know, I didn't realize how many people thought that Hexameda was a worm. And it never occurred to me that that might be why everybody was recommending metronidazole as a dewormer when it's not a dewormer. So once I realized that was going on, I wanted to get that out. Um, and that's what gave me the idea for all the parasite talks. So there's going to be at least, what, three more? Of the parasite talks and I'm going to cover all the ones that we might see in discus and these are also some you might see in guppies you might see them in betas um, just really in any of the fish uh, some of them you always see in certain certain water temperatures um, and I did share the uh, announcement for the stream and some of the other groups on Facebook for some of the other fish species because these, these talks are going to be important to every species Especially when I go down to talking about the capillaria, the camelanus, tapeworms, and that sort of thing. So I think it's it's important for everybody to know about it. And the, the groups have been really good about letting me share the, the strengths for the, for the uh, parasites. So that's been really good. And if you guys have somewhere you can share it, that would be great. Um, I think it's important to get the information out to people about the different parasites so they understand that not every time that you have a white spot not every time is it going to be ick sometimes it might be something else and it might need a different treatment um, and i also recommend finding a veterinarian in your area that works will work with fish and the reason that i recommend that is there are some things that have to be diagnosed by a veterinarian or by a laboratory and it is good if you can get a contact with a veterinarian that you know you you know you know what your treatment is for uh worms let's say but you treated them for worms you treated them for both types of worms and they're still sick well there's some things that have those same symptoms that you can't diagnose you have to take them to a vet to find out and you need to know because there's a possibility that it could be something that can't be treated. Um, hemorrhagic septicemia is caused by bacterial infections. And it can be multiple bacteria. So that falls under bacteria. Yes, yeah, Scheller is the person that I would love to come on and do the live stream. Um, I've asked him if he wanted to come on next week when I'm talking about the worms. That's entirely his decision uh, if he wants to do that or if he wants to wait. I know I'm doing one with um, during fish keeping. During fish keeping is new to um, making videos. I went to his uh, channel and watched his videos. And he's got some really nice videos over there. You guys need to check it out. Um, as a matter of fact, I could probably fine. I've never done this before, so I don't. I subscribe to his channel very quickly, so let's see if I can find the channel.
There we go. All right. It's over there. Share screen. There we go. This is Dream Fish Pee If you guys haven't subscribed to his channel, hop on over there and subscribe. He doesn't have very many. Uh, let's go support him. Uh, he's done some unboxings and uh, setups and talked about his fish and the way that he does things. And I think it's a really interesting channel. Most of the videos are fairly short, so it won't time take long to uh, take a look at them. But get on over there and check him out. He's got great stuff over there. Yes, and I will be having Green Fish Keeper on the stream in the very near future. Along with Sheller, who will be joining me at some point. Um, I think it's wonderful that I can get people up here to talk about fish and talk about their hobby and what they're doing. Um, Night Rider uh, Culinaris is treated with oxytetracycline, tetracycline, or cannabisin. Um, I do have a video on the bacterial infections uh, already posted on the channel. Uh, but I may go back and do another one at some point um, for the most common, which is usually Colinaris and Aramonas. There are four strains of Aramonas that affect can affect discus. So, no, Kim, you're coming up here too. I know you didn't feel good today, so you kind of got out of that. <laughs> uh. All right, guys. Well, I guess I'm going to sign it off today. I'm not going to beat you. I'm going to make you walk around the block or something. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, you guys have a great day. Uh, remember to get on over to Dream Fish Keeping and subscribe to his channel. Uh, Sheller Aquatics channel. You can also subscribe there. Uh, Dee Dee, who was in. I don't know if she's still in. Um... And just take a look at some of the different people that I'm subscribed to. Uh, there's a lot of great channels. And I absolutely love watching their streams. I was watching 503 Aquatics this morning, which is Shanna's channel for Saturday morning cartoons. Um, I've watched the Tuesday night, Ladies Night, uh, Dee Dee and uh, Shanna and some of the other ladies. Um, but check them all out. And... Uh, we will see you guys next week when we discuss worms, which is going to be lots of fun. Y'all have a good evening. Bye, y'all.